bringing the people behind our food to life. This is the artichoke flower. Uh, it's been cut off of its stem, and what we need to do is prep it so that it's edible. Now, an artichoke is part of the thistle family, and it has some characteristic thistly, pokey pieces on here that you can absolutely stab yourself with. So you want to be careful when you pick it up and when you're working with it, and you also want to take off any of those little thorny pieces so that when you eat it, it's a non-issue. Um, so the first thing that I like to do is start with a pair of kitchen shears. Um, I have a pair specifically for the kitchen. I'll wash them, keep them in the kitchen, and use them pretty much for food only. Um, if you only have one pair of scissors in the house, just sanitize it in the sink and use that. But these are good. They're nice and heavy duty. And what I do is I go through and I cut the very tips off of each of these major outside leaves around the side of it because that is where the little thorny piece is. Now once I've gotten most of those tips cut off, to prep it for eating, what you want to do is take off the outmost layer of leaves. So that first level around the outside, because those are really tough, there's hardly any flesh on them, you're not going to want to eat them anyway. All right, so once you've got that first layer off, you want to prep the stem. Now some people just pop the stem off and don't deal with it all, but it actually has a really tender, delicious flavor. So I am going to pull out my trusty peeler rather than take a knife to it and just peel it like it's a cucumber. Now the other thing that the stem is really good for is um, as a way of telling when this artichoke is tender when you're cooking it. So if you pop it off, it's a lot harder to tell if your artichoke is done. Um, so leave it on there and that way you can give it a good bend and see if it feels tender or not. Now in order to get into the inside of this artichoke to continue to prep it, um, the easiest thing that I feel is to just take the whole top off. That's when the big knife comes out. Okay, so that will open this up so that we can actually see into the middle. And that's what we're going for because there's what's called a choke from the outer choke name that's in the middle here. And if I were not to pick this, if I were to just leave this on the plant and let it grow, it's going to bloom into really beautiful purple spiky flowers. And those flowers in a dormant stage are still in here and they're completely inedible. They're just tough and they don't feel good, they don't taste good, so we have to get that out. All right, so the best way to get in here is to just sort of pry it open with your fingers. And as you do that, you'll see lighter color leaves on the inside, like yellowish, and they're much tenderer and softer to the touch. And then in the middle, there's sort of a purplish piece. Now, if you're lucky, you can reach in pull that out. But really what you want to do to make your life a little easier is grapefruit spoon, the kind that has a little serrated edge to it, because then you can really get in there and just get those flower pieces out of there. Not interested in eating them. And here's what they look like. They're just sort of, you know, little thistly pieces. Um, they don't have any flavor, like I said, and they're kind of not a pleasant texture in your mouth. Now, all of these little pieces that I'm pulling out, um, they, the, the little leaf parts actually have some pretty nice flavors, as did the tips and the skin and everything that I had cut off. So what I'll do is I'll actually make a little stock with that um, and, you know, follow it up with some artichoke soup, or maybe I want to make a sauce to go along with my pesto. So I'm a big fan of not throwing anything away. Uh, compost it at the very least, but if there's a way that you can extract some more flavor out of it by making a stock, um, I'm, I'm all for that. Uh, so let's see, there we go. I've got a nice cleaned inside. So this is the point at which you would steam it if you were gonna steam it whole. If you were gonna stuff it and then steam it, now you've made yourself a cavity that's perfect for putting whatever you want in it. Um, if you were gonna do several of these, that's when your bowl of lemon water comes in handy because now that this has been cut, it'll oxidize and turn a little brown. Um, so I always put it cut side down in lemon water to hold while then I go on to prep the rest of my artichokes. Let's say I wanted to steam this. 
I'd have all my artichokes ready. I'd have my steaming basket. So these can just set in here. Um, you can actually stack them on top of each other if you're steaming a whole lot of artichokes. They're still resilient enough, um, even after they've cooked, that they won't necessarily um, have a problem with being stacked. Uh, the little stem works nicely as a handle too, um, at least when you're putting them in. Once you've cooked them, the stem should be tender, so you don't want to pick it up by the, the stem or you'll lose it. Um, it generally takes 20, 30 minutes to cook a whole artichoke, depending on the size and how many you have in there. So just make sure you have plenty of water in your steamer and just keep checking it. Just keep, you know, feeling the uh, stem or if you want to use a toothpick to see if the stem is tender, feel free to poke it. Um, and then when it's steamed, you're ready to go with a little bit of like lemon butter and salt and delicious.